All right. Uh, I guess you want to stop or? So I get up here? Yeah, um, now go. Yeah, ahead. it's uh, um, all right. Those, those, those blinking lights are for you. Oh. Yeah, I I'll be I'll, just, I'll I'll narrate as a disembodied voice uh, to the online people, but yeah, welcome to Five Club, everybody. Um, we this is basically our premiere in a format of lightning round presentations. Each person is about five minutes to present. Um, about thirty minutes in, we'll have a break um, and resume, or break for beer and stuff, and then we'll resume. Um, but yeah, we we have a current set list of about half a dozen people. Um, and we will start with Roberto. So, everyone, if you're welcome to Roberto and Thank you so much. Uh, as, as TJ said, I'm Roberto. Uh, this is my presentation. I'm not going to read the title. Uh, you can read it. Uh, I, from it, you can tell that I, I actually don't push that much. Uh, so, a little bit of background on myself. Not that much background. Uh, if uh, you keep up with the uh, five minutes of fame, I did one uh, back in September <laughs> where I had a Black & Decker air conditioner um, with a remote sucks on it. So I decided to put it on the internet uh, so I could control it, but also anybody else could control it. Not that anybody did. Um, so that was a really stupid idea, um, but it worked out. But, uh, yeah, I'm lazy. That's it. Uh, so this prep uh, so I was looking into Twitch plays. I've never actually actually participated in Twitch plays, but I've seen enough YouTube videos of Twitch content that's been captured and then re-shown on, on YouTube. So I get the gist of what it's about. Uh, a bunch of people controlling the game, essentially. Uh, Pokemon, I think, is, is the classic game that they play. Um, I was really disappointed to learn that it's just emulators. That's it. They just take some input, throw it into an emulator. Uh, so I have a Super Nintendo at home that hasn't been doing it. I don't play a lot of games. Uh, I don't really even enjoy games that much anymore. But I do like to see what I can drive a console with. Uh, so the project here is uh, I wanted to drive a Super Nintendo through just very simple HTTP requests. Um, the HTTP request being the simple part, but getting the input into it, not so much. Uh, so that's the first part. Second part is I actually want people to be able to see it. I don't want it to just be that I play it on the TV and control it from my phone. I actually want to put it out there so other people could see it kind of like it plays. Uh, and then there's uh, back in 2020, 2019, when I was out 16th Street hitting the bars, um, there there was a, an entrepreneur, Mo Gaming, I, I guess it goes by Mo, um, where he would have his car out and people would come up and they play Super Nintendo. I thought that was really cool, very interactive. Everybody shows up. I kind of want that, uh, but none of the physical interaction. So actually, uh, not as fun. Uh, anyway, so those were the two. Payloads here. Excellent. Running a bit slow. Uh, so here's the hardware. Here's like my little recipe list. Uh, obviously, a Super Nintendo controller, the Super Nintendo itself. This was like version one. Well, not version one. This was like day one. Didn't know what I was doing. And those are all the wrong parts, even. Uh, so none of that worked. Um, but I have some uh, parallel in um, serial out uh, bit registers. Chip registers. Uh, I don't know anything about circuits prior to this project. Uh, two level shifters because I'm going to be using a uh, Raspberry Pi. So that's three volts. I need five volts going into the Super Nintendo. A um, bunch of other stuff as well. We're going to super fast, fast. Uh, software. Um, I don't have time to build everything. So I just uh, grabbed as much as I could. Uh, so I needed. A, a very quick uh, HTTP uh, library to drive this just because Super Nintendo is just so fast. So I tried using some other libraries, tried using just like an out of box Python class like server. Didn't work. Uh, so I went for Mongoose, uh, wiring Pi, obvious choice for uh, doing um, UBIO on Raspberry Pis. 
uh, some out of the box uh, web or TC or TPM uh, streaming server of uh, JavaScript, which I don't want to go and shoot. Um, there's going to be there's a couple of repos that I have to get those wing or straight together. Covering the architecture, um, we don't have to go through all of, all of this. But there's the Super Nintendo at the top, and then there's you at the bottom. So you come to here and you press some buttons, which are just uh, HTML buttons, and boom, it goes it over here, and eventually ends up to the Super Nintendo, and then something happens on the screen. Hopefully. Uh, everything is stable and uh, I forgot to unplug anything. Uh, so here's some uh, really crappy uh, photos that I took. Uh, I just did a little photo op with it, with my little, my baby. So breadboards and ridiculous amount of cables and the Super Nintendo kind of in the background there. Uh, I was live streaming this thing for a point, but I realized it was taking up valuable real estate on the game itself. So I axed it. Um, but I am sharing it in the actual uh, in in the chat right now. You see the photo. It's my uh, camera at home, uh, so you can see what I what's actually going on. Um, demo, I guess. What's my time? Don't answer. Uh, here we go. Actually, I have a tab. Okay, so here you go. Let's see if it works, please. Today. Can I share my audio? Yeah, I can see. Oh, <laughs> no, we don't want to do that. Hold on. Can I mute myself? No, I cannot. Okay, well, you can go to this website, stream.biglargeclark.com, the meaning behind it. Oh, thank you, person. Please don't, don't, don't unequip stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, everybody in here, uh, you can join in. Assuming that I've set up, uh, it's a little bit finicky on the Apple product because of the, I don't know, the, the certificates are kind of weird with it. Uh, I've had a bunch of friends kind of like test it out. But they're not that interested and think it's kind of stupid. And why wouldn't they just play, actually play games? And I had a hard time explaining what's actually going on. Um, here you go. We have three people. So this is an actual Super Nintendo. In my house right now, 15 minutes away. I can reset it anytime if I do not like what anybody's doing. So I'm trying to delete my safe games. I will just deny access to you. Uh, how do we get out of this menu, actually? Please. Oh, there we go. Oh, hello, everyone. That's it. Oh, okay. We're all going to fight. Okay, we're not because I don't have time for this. Um, but enjoy fighting the goblins, whoever's uh, playing right now. Um, that's it. Um, it did work. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I'm not embarrassed at all. Um, here's credits. Uh, basically, explain what the protocol is for communicating with the Super Nintendo. Took me forever. I probably read this a thousand times over. It still didn't make sense. Only maybe like two weeks ago, everything kind of clicked. And since then, I've just been making it look pretty foot and button everywhere. Uh, that's it. I don't have anything else. Hey, uh, super big question about what Final Fantasy was that? Was that like 3 6? That was Final Fantasy 4. C C C C is that the one about the I don't know anything about it. I know Speasel's in it, and I know Kane's in it. I don't know the story. I blew past everything so that I could do the stand up. Awesome. And I will drop from the. From the call. Oh, I didn't realize how short it was. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any questions? Oh, should I save the question? Here it is. Yeah, the issues with like I don't know, I think issues with like analog devices. Yes, the issues are always That's absolutely the worst part of this. Um, so there's the Super Nintendo clock and the latch signal. Uh, and I tried to first make it work with Pi. Everyone said the Pi it's going to be too slow. They were right. Doesn't doesn't work. Then I bought uh, a bunch of the uh, ship registers. I bought them along once. I didn't know of all the various types, so I 
it had everything in front of me, and then I'm like, wait, I don't have pins for this to all go into. And I got more chip registers, and it it works the opposite way of the superintendent wants. I got like a proof of concept where I could make Mario jump, and that was it. I couldn't get him to move. Actually, most of the time, it would lock up and it would ground. Um, and then I finally just said, screw it. I'm going to find like uh, what exactly what the Super Nintendo uses. Um, there's like a newer variant of that chip register in, in, in uh, being manufactured today. So I just bought a bunch of those and then boom, it just worked. So uh, yeah, it, that was the worst part of this project. Uh, it took me about a month from, I think, start to finish. It be like yeah. the middle of March started. So, yeah. Okay. Done. Please message me. I left my stuff up there if you want to ask more questions online, whichever. So, what do you need? Oh, yeah, that's right. I just to say, like, two months of the text. So, everyone, welcome. What do you need? Try and sit. I feel like it's easier for me to talk. Let me share and be. The the one to call. Uh, you are back to it, so it will be your silhouette. The, the online you will see your silhouette. Okay, all right. I'll try. I'll try. But no, uh, you look uh, like stereotypical. Typical like hacker with a bad light, like <laughs> <shroud> <laughs> face. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, am I, is my screen on? Oh, yes. Cool. So uh, I am throwing up a interactive scripting language. It is a different way of interacting with your editor. So we can ask it for help. And uh, the way it works is this sound of that fire, the beginning of the comment, that's a variable inside of your code. So if you assign or change that variable, the interpreter will, interpreter will rewrite the file with the contents of the string in that variable. Give you an example here so I can make what Another variable, and if I assign some stuff to it, uh, the contents that come out in the variable. So there are some built in ones that uh, you can use here. Let's try this one called example one. And we have a Fibonacci function and can try out, but to try it out, I am going to sign the output of that to the variable. And then I'm going to fit on this. So uh, here we can see the outputs, and there is also a on this version of that too. So if we do bid here, we don't have to go through all the boilerplate that it took. We make this comment. And uh, the cool things about this are that it's editor agnostic. It works in uh, any editor. I'm just showing you the bins. And the thing that inspired me to make this was OFMT or tools like it, like Rust FMT, like code formatters that automatically format your code. 
that got me used to the idea of a program changing source code out from Zoom, like while I'm editing it. So this was like the usage pattern I was already comfortable with. And things that I think would be cool to add would be like a debugger that lets you step through the execution of your program, like not leaving the text editor like in line, and maybe a live level. So it doesn't have to reevaluate the entire source code. Like every time you run the file, you're just like pending to the bottom of the file, but it's like a REPL and text editor and one, which is something I always wanted. Uh, here's another demo I made. So here we have the game of life. Uh, and every time you save the file, it runs one iteration of the game of life. They can run game of life and then uh, awesome. <laughs> and the thing I did this for was called LangJam, which is like a game jam, but for programming languages. So we had 40 hours to make this. Um, and there's a few videos about it on YouTube, so you can check it out there. The theme was first class comments. It was like, that was it. Like in, how we want. And the jams are cool. Like I would, I would never have um, come up with the idea for this if it wasn't for the pressure of jam. So you down to jam on a lot much help. That's it. Good question. Yes. Yeah. Is, is there like, I guess, aside from being cool in itself, like, are there any like sort of problems where it's like, oh, this would be a natural way of addressing this sort of problem, like where you're like just kind of altering their you know, source code each time? For, for me, it's like, <laughs> what's up? No, I was telling him speaking. Oh, okay. I can't tell him. Yeah, so. All right, trying to answer your question. Yeah, I think that one has a lot of game coming through. Yeah, I think it's more game. I think you're going to use it. Okay. The thing I think is like, it's just like a, a concept of like, Stuff changing in your in your editor while while you're editing the file is like it's like a wild wild concept. Like, what can you what else can you do with it? But like, I always thought the editor in a REPL is like pretty scuffed, like compared to like the editor I use for editing source code. So if I have like kind of two the two of them together without like writing all this like new GUI stuff that does all this like interactive stuff, but it's just like in stuff that already works that that could be like pretty cool. I guess uh your your there's like programs that recreate themselves are pretty cool, but like the fact that the game of life was running in your source code is like it's like it kind of reminds me of like a doc, a doc test. Like from like Python or something, where it's like you have like the you put the test to like um, you put the test in a comment like above the fun function. You like test it out, and you have the example output there. It's just like sort of like that, but it's like it's like actually running inside of the pro program. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, up next, uh, Michael Kiyoshi Salvatore uh, with Ports and Resilience of Order in Chaos. 
It's uh, Michael. It's Michael here to present. Right. <laughs> um, in that case, uh, we have the lawn. Yeah. Oh God! <laughs> Why did I say that? <laughs> Uh, towards resilient supporter in the chaos. That doesn't sound like it. <laughs> <laughs> You're okay. All right. I'm presenting apparently on the vindication of cheese. Um, all right, so uh, I, I'm i Alon, and I am a wiki fan. Oh, this is a lot off my chest, and I feel comfortable sharing this, or at least I was. So back in 2004, when I was a wee child, I made my first wiki edit, which was the vandalism, and I tried multiple times. It was very important for me to, ooh, interesting. Yes, yeah, so it was very important for me to let everyone know that this was the best game of all time. Um, but, you know, with Wikipedia, someone quickly came along and edited it, so I got tired of that pretty fast. Um, and I didn't play with Wikipedia for many years until I got into an argument on Reddit. And basically someone's saying some, some trash about my home state of Maryland, it's a New Jersey Maryland rivalry, and they were just, you know, making stuff up. And then they were citing Wikipedia. And basically, they're like, you know what I can do? I can just go on Wikipedia, write some trash, and use it in my argument online. And people, you know, are going to believe it because it's on Wikipedia. Um, but this this was enough of a motivation for me to get into Wikipedia. I'm like, no, this is, will not stand. Don't you dare lie about my state. And so I got involved and I've been an editor since then. I've made, uh, you know, a pittance of edits on Wikipedia. It's only 500, you know, why am I giving a talk? It, you know, I'm like such a low count editor. Well, writing in sentences is not more my forte and I discovered something more interesting, Wikidata. So this is basically Wikipedia for people who think like computers or, you know, people who are interested in quote unquote knowledge bases. So um, you may have heard about the knowledge graph or Freebase or like there's the Google version of this. There's the old open source version. This is what the open source version came into. It's like one of my old coworkers actually developed it in Germany. But um, essentially what this is, is the idea is like, oh, I want to structure all knowledge in a way that is language agnostic can be used by computers like it's not a database but it's sort of like it um so this essentially the idea is um we can give everything an item in this case douglas adam is number 42 um but it has all these wonderful properties but it's also very you know most people read sentences and want to use wikipedia um also here's the uh, item for noise bridge if you want to edit it later um i encourage it but anyway, so I wanted to be a Wikipedia contributor. So I was like, you know what? I don't want to do this by hand. What if I came up with a way of doing this, uh, coming up with structured things and just importing into Wikidata? Well, I could turn sentences into data, but that's hard. So I didn't do that. Instead, I went down and I found heuristics. So essentially, uh, let's move up. Wikipedia articles have categories, and categories are basically like sets. And if you're a member in the set, then you should have some property that, you know, denotes you're in it. So, for instance, Barack Obama is in the category 1961 births. So, therefore, he's probably born in 1961. So, you can come over and basically add that item in a structured way to Wikidata. Cool. That's awesome. Um, so, I did a lot of this. Um, I basically, like, oh, I'm going to come and, like, here are all these heuristics you can use to add structure to Wikidata. 
Now I did 75,000 of these, and that's cool. But then there's things like Doris Day. Doris Day is great, and as you all know, she's very well known for being a scientist. And no, not quite. So in her categories, you'll notice there is a one that is American Christian scientists, which sounds like, ah, yes, they're American, they're Christian, and there's the scientists. I have three facts. It turns out lang language is contextual, and that's a hard problem to solve. Um, and actually, one of my friends slash, you know, a guy who also came up with the same idea, got called a Russian troll for this, because one, they're Russian, and, you know, they, their algorithm screwed up. So but instead of, like, calling, giving Doris Day the wrong occupation, he gave this person, you know, an occupation of soldier who was, like, Canadian terrorist and gotten onto Google, and, like, people were like, oh, blah, blah, blah. Wikipedia is being manipulated by Russian trolls. And it's like, no, it's just, it's embarrassing. But, you know, this is what happens when you try and favor recall instead of precision. So one, I like, would like Wikipedia to be complete with all the information. Some people want that information to be right, which, you know, is understandable. Um, this is where we'd like to be, where we're both right and complete, but we're not there yet. So how do we how do we how do we solve this problem? Like, okay, if I wanted to, one way to do it would get humans to add all this information, but that would take forever, and then some people are vandals anyway, like I used to be. Um, but a robot doesn't know how. So what do you do with this? Um, yeah, one of the ideas is you basically like make people better with computers. So like right now. Oh, it broke my heart. I went to a wiki conference. I'm like, what do you like doing? And they're like, eight hours a week, I sit there and I update redirect links because it doesn't do that automatically. I'm like, oh my God, this is hundreds of hours a year that like could be automated. If only there was a tool, but you know, this is a bunch of volunteers, a lot more in tech and enthusiasts. Um, so one project I got to work on um, was, you know, I'm Disclaimer, I'm at Google, and then I got to use, I got convinced them, you know what would be cool is if you paid me to work on Wikipedia tools to help wiki editors, because like you kind of like embarrassing things. But anyway, we, me and one of my friends there, we like came up with a few um, tools, which leveraging other people's machine learning algorithms is saying like, rather than a system where everyone's like, here are the pages I want to look at. Every hour, I'm going to refresh and see if anything has changed and be like, that's vandalism. Instead, this is basically going through all of them and saying, like, here are the things that are likely to be vandalism. And someone was like, and this, and these, that's probably vandalism. You should revert this. And I'm not going to do that right now. Um, so this is another tool. This is another tool. I'm not going to go into that. Um, so a lot of people have tried to do different things. Like, there's people are trying to gamify it of like, hey, you know what? You're a person, you have spare time on your hands. Why don't you play one of these fun games to like just answer quick questions? And if you answer them, then you can just populate with data. Um, so there's a bunch of other counter vandalism things we're trying to do. Um, I just wanted to talk about the fun ones. And my pet project, which is too much text here, but the idea is like, all these institutions are putting their data up on here and they're saying, hey, Barack Obama was born in Hawaii and you can cite the Smithsonian. And then someone comes along and changes that and says, no, he was born in Kenya and it still says cited by the Smithsonian. And it's like, that's embarrassing to Wikipedia, the Smithsonian, Barack Obama. Um, but the idea is like, hey, I'm, I'm gonna put my information up there. Let me add a signature to it. And if someone changes it, then I'm no longer signing it. And then I, Pitch this to Wikipedia, the wiki community, but crypto is a not a nice word there, so people were angry about it. I'm still fighting that fight, but you know that's that's where we're at right now. Um, so I guess in in closing, I trust Wikipedia. I mean, too trusted, but like be skeptical about some things if they don't look right. And look up your sources. Um, but yeah, so that's that's uh, the state of things. And John, I don't know.
Anyone have any questions? So, um, so I like that uh, you built tools for Wikipedia community with a lot of people uh, like I didn't have no one could do that because I thought it's just editing the thing. But uh, can you talk more about Wikidata, what it is, and how this knowledge graph uh, is used for Wikipedia? So, oh, um, let me go to tonight. And if somebody want to contribute to Wikipedia open source, how do we do that? Um, so I would say there's a bunch of open source. Um, um, there, there's a bunch of open source projects related to Wikipedia that um, that uh, basically like the community doesn't have a lot of people um, who are tech savvy, and then so there's the Wiki developer community, which I guess is I'm part of. Um, and they do a bunch of things like so. Um, here is Wikidata is was built by um, built to basically be the backbone of Wikipedia's across different languages. So the idea is like, hey, I'm in English, I'm adding data. It'd be cool if that showed up on other languages. So that's really important to like low resource languages, like where there aren't a bunch of speakers, because like the number of volunteers presumably scale. So this is catalog which is like there aren't that there aren't as many speakers as English, but all of this information is not from Catalan, but it's sourced from Wikidata. So basically you're like, I'm gonna have an info box and it just takes in the this ID, the ID of this thing and grabs all this information from Wikidata. And basically the cool thing is like you edit in one place and suddenly it goes to all Wikipedians. And in most most language communities like this, but then English is like no. We don't want other languages editing data and having it change our Wikipedia. So that's that's a whole other fight, but they are, they're coming around and thinking it's a good idea. But they do. The Wiki community is a contentious bunch. They mostly mean well, but there are a bunch of like sticklers and like we've done it since you know the year 2000 this way, and we're not going to change. And they're like, but could we though? And sometimes they're like, okay, but yeah. So maybe it, yeah, but if you want to talk Wiki, I'd love. To talk about it, and if you have ideas, I want to hear. Uh, yep, that's that's life as a wiki vandal. I got like a really, really clear. So the, the data box on the right, mm -hmm. that's like in like every other language other than English, that's coming from wiki data, and then it's like what it's not. So it's it, it's not every language. Like there are some articles in the English Wikipedia where they're using a Wikidata info box, but there are like a few editors who will just go around and like, no, I don't want these. I'm going to change it and I'm going to hand write all wow. the information. So I don't know. I like roll my eyes and like think Luddite, but you know, they're, I don't know what the, I think the, their idea is like, well, we don't want things to change somewhere else, and you're not looking at it. So therefore, we don't look at Wikidata. So I don't know. I, I think like this lets more eyes be on any potential thing of vandalism. Like if someone in Germany fixes it, or if someone in America fixes it, I don't care. But you know, it's 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 one of those things. It it, it will eventually all of them will be in Wikidata. I am very confident in that. Just like fighting the fight there. So. Yeah, oh, thank you for this thing. Uh, yeah, happy to talk about that. All right. Um, so up next, we have Cloud. Uh, and following up is Romy. Uh, and then Surya is after. Is after that. Do we have to ask you? Yep. Okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're currently. Uh, Are you talking about it? Because we can't hear you. So.
Um, I started wondering if I should do this presentation mostly because there was there were some models and some that I came across through my communication class. Uh, and there was like a really interesting question that intrigued me. And that is, how do we recreate a sort of wild creative energy the old noise bridge they had? So this was one of the inventions that came out of the old days. Uh, it was the Barbot. And it was interesting to see if there was a way we could design a space that inspires that level of creation, that level of collaboration, and that sort of ingenuity that I feel should be in every major space. Um, so obviously I can't. I cannot list every component that made the maker space so wild and so creative and pretty much insanely productive, right? But I can demonstrate two models and a list that made it that made it so productive. Uh, the first one was the Sanctu model. So admittedly, admittedly the Sanctu model usually applies to hot models. You want to design a space in a way that promotes a sense of well-being. People want to stay there as long as possible. People are engaged. Uh, however, I would argue that the Sanct model did apply to the old days. Uh, there was there were some components of it, like self-esteem. If you were just like, you know, someone new, you were walking into the old days. And you were, you were treated like someone of value and someone incredibly capable of contributing to this space. The second was autonomy. You pretty much did whatever you wanted, right? Like no one forced you to be in one room or another, and you got to engage with whatever it is you liked. Normality, I have a hard time arguing for normality with Noise Bridge, but it did have um, something very predictable about it. Um, everywhere you went, you had tools, you had machines, you had the community that was about the same. Like everyone had like this, in, this intellectual curiosity that would call qualify under this model, and you have control. You have the option to like do whatever you want in this space. And right now, I wanted to take the lights in this space and create like an artificial daylight. I have that option so long as I want to put in the work and effort. And the last late motivation. I'm gonna be honest. This part was blocked over so much in architectural psychology that I may have a hard time understanding what they were trying to say, but. Motivation, I'm willing to bet, is whether you had a lot of things around you that inspired you to do things, that inspired you to work on projects and challenge yourself out when you're out there. The second one is a checklist that I, I'm aware maybe no one wants to talk about work, but I'm wondering here. But it did have a component that made it an incredibly productive space. In the old days, there was a lot of daylight. Like, do, if you guys are some of, some of the older members may remember every room you had, you had daylight, you had a way to regulate your biocircadian rhythm. And it led to, you know, people coming in there with their own work. And it, the way the space was designed, you kind of got a lot of your own person work done like fairly well. Kind of one was connectivity. You could reliably, um, you know, you could reliably expect like most of the electrical outlets in here, most of the internet is definitely working here. Uh, so some of these things overlap, like space and choice. And when they were studying how do you engage the most amount of people in a tiny space, space and choice, surprisingly, goes to say the perfect, the most perfectly designed space has like a bit of a big center like this, and tiny little couches and tiny little rooms over there, so that people can choose to disengage or engage. Um, influence and control plays a huge role in whether people want to be there. So like for someone like me, I see my coffee beans all over the space. And, you know, someone else, like the guy who created the bar bot says, hey, I see, like, I created something of utility here. I belong here. And that um, plays a huge role in whether someone wants to engage and whether someone's like very consistent about it. 
Um, and then there's like some really basic things that should be somewhat of a greater. Like if you have refreshers, people are more inclined to stay and have on things. If you have comfort, like cushy couches, um, a sense of like well heating, um, and you know inclusion, wash, and storage, like a place where people to put their things. You're more likely to see people coming back. The last model that I want to point out is the Fox behavioral model. So for those of you who don't know, the Fox behavioral model played a huge role in persuasive technology. When these companies like Twitter or Facebook were first coming out, they were wondering, they had one question here, and that is, how do you get people to keep coming back? Um, Noise Bridge, however, they actually follow the Fox behavioral model in the way they structure their classes without quite intending to. So ability, ability, ability is just pretty much saying like, how do you remove the least amount of steps from A to B? Um, how do you make simplify a process of say joining a class of getting engaged in a community as simple as possible where people don't have to put in so much work just to get things done? That is ability and that's how you hook someone first. The second one was trigger. Why would someone want to take, take part in any of these classes? Um, so they see a prompt, right? Like maybe the prompt is, oh, hey, there's a ton of people just going to this space. I'm just sitting here. Why don't I see what it is? Or, you know, they see like a lot of cool gadgets just laying around and they're, like, they're interacting with it, they're touching it. Um, so um, I, I, I mentioned why the interaction is so important because the way you, you know, taste, touch, smell things play a huge role in whether you want to engage in things, right? So, Retail stores manipulate that in some senses, like Target or Starbucks. That, um, and they're able to kind of keep you coming back by engaging in these senses, and you don't even know that's happening. So when when we search had like all these cool gadgets laying around, like the Barbot or like um, another invention that I'll show you later, they were creating like this interface or this like interaction that plays a huge role in. You know, getting people to want to engage and getting people to want to participate. Uh, and then there's, of course, just self motivation. Like some people are just here because they want to learn. But, you know, two models and a list doesn't really incorporate what it is that made the old space so wild. Uh, like, what was it that inspired this like creativity and this ingenuity? Like there's some things I'm not mentioning, like there was an element of non-conformity that played a role. And there's definitely people in the space that play a role in why people keep coming back. Thank you. Questions for Bob? So if you could like I feel like you had several recommendations there, but if you could just make decide on one recommendation to change this space, what would you? So I think the recommendation is like how do you get people to stay here as long as possible? Um, because when they stay here as long as possible, they tend to engage in whatever the heck is going on here. Um, I would definitely recommend maybe like just improving like refreshments and comfort. So that maybe like someone's just kind of hacking on their own computer or working on their own projects. They're more inclined to stay here or use this as like the second office space. Thank you for your question. Yeah, absolutely. Anyone else? Anyone else want to know about persuasive designs? Is but, that just like the model that Google is based off of? Because that's like how they entice people to stay and work for hours and hours, basically. But, but really, that's also like what are really that's what a, like a really successful app or like a really successful company like Facebook or Twitter mm -hmm. does. Like the question is, how do you get people to keep coming back, right? right. It doesn't really so matter. that you don't have to convince them to stay. Yeah. yeah. So something <clears throat> I've heard about is uh, the idea of artificially narrowing spaces yeah. so as we do the social interactions as people move through. Uh, given that this is a completely wide open space, are there any like walls or barriers that you would add for the unit here? Um, it sounds like I feel the space maybe a little bit too tiny, so that's why I was referring mostly to the old space uh, because I felt the old space was designed perfectly in a way that promoted interactions, right? Mm -hmm. Like some people don't want to interact just yet; they don't know anymore, so they want to stay. 
tiny couch over there before they're like, oh, hey, these people are kind of cool. Why don't I ask uh, something? I and that was how yeah, they were really the most engaged in. Uh, uh, another one was that was brought up in precise design was triangulation. So it is set up in a way that you get the most amount of interaction from people uh, when they're kind of facing each other. And I think this is reasonably set up. Thank you. Thank you. Any other? So I guess I feel like the the like the intention of this design is like, oh no, great productive interaction and just like yeah, you know, like just drive people towards productivity and such. So like you mentioned getting people to stay in a space is like a good way for them to be in a place they can be productive and potentially interact with people who could also be productive. But then like once like let's say you're there. Like how do you how do you entice that like call to action of like you know what I've seen I don't know this pile of stuff here since I started coming. How do you like what's are there like ways of are there like space ways of trying to motivate people or is that more of like a social thing like you know it's like we should start like you know call highlighting people's things or like I don't, I don't know what the I think it's just a bit of both because, like, if you come from my background, you generally just don't social work, like, you don't let someone else do all the work, right? So, I'm curious if that's just a social problem. Uh, but there was something that actually made people more likely to care right, about the uh, If you remember in the 12 elements of creating a fantastic marketplace, there was an influence source control. So, if you were someone who created like an invention or you created something awesome in the space, you were more inclined to take care of it. If you can promote more people to Create something or do some sort of art or just kind of like engage a little bit and it has to be something that they find um, innately like valuable, they're more likely to just kind of clean up um, or like take care of the space. And another problem is I think I may have used a really poor word choice when I say productivity, because when they say productivity, they're thinking of like a workplace. And I may have meant like what was something that was intrinsically of value to you and your community. And that Arguably, is you know a form of productivity, but doesn't have a have that association. Any other questions? Thank you. Do we have? Oh, uh, Romeo, are you still there? Are you there, Romy? Can we hear Romy? Was that an issue last 10 minutes ago? That just makes So I thought, I thought, uh, I didn't. I mean, I'm just like making sure it's like, she like pops right now, like I can't hear her, she's getting frustrated. Yeah, they can't hear, it says can't message on, they can't hear me. I think there should be sound output, because like if I do this. <laughs> I can I can adjust the sound. So, um, so last time, last time, like refreshing helped. Um, we'll figure it out. Okay. Um, I will. I will. I will mess with it a little bit. Um, in the meantime, uh, let's invite Suryash. Um, I'll. Um, he wants to present with his, um, with his laptop. So I'll mute this mic for now.
Can you uh, check on your speaker? Can you hear me now? Are you coming through? Yeah, I'm just coming. coming. Okay, good. I'll try to speak louder. How do I share screen? Uh, bottom middle, there's a little computer with an arrow pointing to the right. Okay. <laughs> So can you see my screen now? Yep. Yes. Okay, good, good, good. Oops, oops, something wrong, something. Okay, uh, perfect. Let's start on the slideshow. Sorry for all the all the all that. I want to talk about creative coding. How many people are coders here? Software coders by day? Quite a lot. Uh, a lot of us software engineers, we write code at least. I did a lot of uh, code was involved, like debugging, and it was uh, it got monotonous after some time, boring, frustrating, and it kind of killed my passion and interest from coding itself. Coding used to be fun, and then it became boring, and then I was like, why am I doing this and this legacy code and all that? And then I fell into this community of creative coders, people who write code. A lot of what we saw today had noise bridge coding, interesting applications, but there's a minority of such people. Uh, I think this idea of creative coding, it's, this is the definition out of Wikipedia, and it talks about creative coding. The goal is to create something expressive, like an art, instead of something functional, like a mobile website or an app, or some kind of cloud service that you might do at your job. And there are a lot of types of creative coding from hardware to VJing. VJing is like when people create graphics when there's music performance or something like flash and fashion that we have here, visual design, projection mapping, prototyping, all of that stuff. So I started a meetup group around this. It's called San Francisco Bay Area Creative Technologies. And uh, I will share a link in the chat later on. I invite you to join. And I also want to do some events here in this space. So I'll come back on Tuesday to get the <laughs> both to get that okay. Because uh, some of the projects that creative coding people do, I'll show you quickly. The beginner one, or very simple, uh, the library is called Processing. It's a Java-based programming environment. And there's a web version of it called P5JS. And, and this website has examples. So you come here, move your mouse, and you can create art. Kaleidoscope, cool art. How does this work? There's a very simple program that is written right below, and you can copy and paste it and run it on your local machine or put it on your website and let people interact. So there are tons of examples for P5.js for processing. Uh, art, interactive art with music, sound, uh, images. Uh, let me show something. Perhaps. Uh, animation effects like these, you know, stuff just for fun that makes you feel good. Um, there is another community, more advanced uh, software. Artists, I, we, can, we can say, people who write low-level code, it's called shader code or uh, GLSL programming language, it's like C, and there's a whole community of those people, and they have, there's a website called Shader Toy. So people create this type of art that we are seeing right here on, on the left, and all of that is running on the GPU, very high performance because it's a very low level code that you can see on the right side. And it's this math based part, this fractal geometry. That, that infinitely it recurs. So you go inside of it and you can see more and more same fractal. Very interesting. And there are tons of things you can do with shader. So in the media group, we're, we want to talk about these topics and we want to learn these and we want to build and share. And so it's not limited to that. But if people want to build 
something with Alexa, uh, like your own DIY Alexa on Raspberry Pi, like we saw some people doing projects today. Bring those and people will give feedback and we'll share uh, kind of like what we're doing today, but we'll, we'll, we'll have a uh, more deeper dive into that. There used to be something like this at Noise Switch, I remember older location where it would tell you every time or you know, the, every hour it would announce. I don't know if we have that, but we can make yeah. something like that. It got shut down because it, it, it's, it did too often. However, um, we could make something. Maybe after class. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> yes, we had one nice thing. Somebody was talking about like getting people more involved. It, it said every, like, I, it's still in my head. It was like, the thing would go off Tuesday night, 10 p.m. Clean up, clean up, everybody. This music, Mary would sing. And everybody would get up and then we would clean the trash and all that stuff. So, um, and then there's one project that I made with my friends. So I'll just quickly show you. Uh, this is a website called <laughs> DearDiary.ai. And you can go into this website. And uh, uh, this is like a journal. So if I type something here, nobody can hear the audio. Okay, you so, can hear you. Yeah. I'm going to stop. Yeah. So, this is a website. What it is, you write text here, and every key press, it generates a music note. No, no, no. Right, something is Any question? Ideas? So I'm curious for the creative coding meetup that you have. What's the format of that look like? Is it collaborative? Is it like killing off your own projects, talking about what's going on in the yeah. coding space? The uh, previous meetups were typical, like uh, we did a, um, a talk. We had a meetup at Stanford. Karma. It's a school of computational music, and uh, the professor wrote a book, gave a talk, and then in the end we had like five minute of showcase. So we had people who uh, people who do algorithm, they write code and they create music. So they did a little performance with that. Uh, I, I did a little performance. So yeah, it's a mix. But you know, we can we can we don't have a speaker. We can just talk about stuff and uh, maybe the feedback. Yeah. Wait, is this written in Chuck or is it? So uh, the the uh, it's it's a, a different language. Uh, okay. It's called tidal cyclones. Yeah, Chuck is another one that's from Stanford. Uh, uh, real time music program. Yeah. 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 So I guess from from aside maybe perhaps but aside from that last example, it seemed fairly like like very heavy basis and like interesting mathematics and such is that like is that the majority sort of uh like oh you know how like a lot of the projects are like oh let's kind of delve into like the mathy side coding versus the oh i really want to do x with my code or, um, yeah you know uh everyone like because everybody's at different level so everybody's welcome to, to bring something i think i think the more creative artistic it is the more uh, I personally, this the day job is very intellectual, so I try to express emotions or feelings through this creative medium. So, so 